Hey folks, this is Kalani. Another round of class changes and balance tuning came through on the beta, mainly focusing on the tanks this time, but we do have a few extras thrown in there for good measure. I can tell you that monks will see some changes, the demon hunters are in here, paladins as well, some big disc priest nerfs, and even some shaman changes to round things out. I'll split the video up with timestamps so you can skip around at your own leisure, but before we get started, I wanted to remind you that we have some beta key keys to give away, and we're doing that over on Twitter, because it's much easier when compared to trying to run something on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description for that, and in the comments section below so you can hop on over to Twitter, check all of the entry requirements, and get yourself lined up for a chance at a beta key. I'll also be giving away handfuls of beta keys on our stream, so be sure to pop by twitch.tv slash KalaniTV for another chance at beta. We go live every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST, and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks, so I hope to see you soon. Up first are the Demon Hunters. Vengeance saw a couple of nerfs, so let's go over those first. If you've been paying attention to Vengeance changes, you'll know that they get the Fell Devastation ability baseline in Shadowlands. It used to have a 45 second cooldown, but I guess Blizzard figured it was a bit too strong, because that's been nerfed and the cooldown is now 1 minute long. This ties into another nerf to the demonic talent for Vengeance. When you use Fell Devastation, you enter Metamorphosis for a brief period of time. That used to be 8 seconds, it's now down to just 6 seconds. So not only will you have reduced uptime on Metamorphosis due to the longer cooldown on Fell Devastation, but also because of the uptime nerf on the demonic talent. This translates to a rather sizable nerf to a damage mitigation ability, as Metamorphosis is a very powerful cooldown. That's not all though, Demon Hunter self-healing has been targeted as well. Absorbing a lesser soul fragment used to heal you for 8% of all damage taken in the last 5 seconds, that's been knocked down to 6% of all damage taken in the last 5 seconds. It might not seem like a lot, but seeing as Demon Hunters rely quite heavily on souls for their self-heals, it's definitely going to add up over time. Soul Cleave healing was also reduced, it used to heal you for 105% of your attack power, that's been knocked down all the way to just 50% of your attack power slashed in half right there. So a massive nerf to the initial healing calculation on Soul Cleave, but the additional healing you gain for Soul Fragments consumed was buffed at the same time. It doesn't quite balance it out, it is still a nerf overall, but Soul Cleave will now heal for quite a bit more when you absorb souls versus when you don't. And to round out the nerfs to self-healing, the Feast of Souls talent was also reduced from 67.5% of your attack power down to 54%. So just nerfs overall to Demon Hunter, mainly targeting their self-heals and their metamorphosis uptime. Another tank on this list that's going to see some nerfs are the Brewmasters. Brewmaster monks have been incredibly strong on the beta for a while now, and that's ignoring the part where they were bugged and basically couldn't die. Celestial Brew has proven to be a powerful cooldown, so it's no surprise to see that it's going to get nerfed. The overall absorb will reduce significantly, the calculation used to be your attack power multiplied by 10, then adjusted again for versatility, now it's your attack power multiplied by 6, so a large decrease on the shield's overall potential with that calculation change, and if that wasn't bad enough, the cooldown has also been doubled from 30 seconds up to 1 minute. So a very large nerf overall, but one that is probably warranted. I don't think this will knock Brewmaster off the top spot just yet, but it definitely brings it back into line. But that's not all we have. Purifying Brew has also had its cooldown increased from 15 seconds to 20 seconds, so you won't be able to use that as often. But on the flip side, the Shuffle Passive has actually been buffed. This used to increase the effectiveness of your stagger by 75%, and that's been bumped up to 100%. Honestly, as long as Brewmaster has stagger, they will be a viable pick for raid content especially, but now they're just going to need a bit more help from the healers instead of being able to carry themselves to victory. Prop Paladins have been uh, a bit of a weird tank on the beta so far. Lots of things have been moving around, so why stop now? The Shining Light passive is being changed or averted or swapped around, whenever you want to call it, once again. It used to provide free Word of Glories. Then it boosted the healing of Word of Glories, but it made it still cost Holy Power. Now it's just back to free Word of Glories once more. Spending your Holy Power on a Word of Glory as a Prop Paladin will never feel good, especially over a Shield of the Righteous, so I'm very happy 
for this change. So now, every five Shield of the Righteous you use, your next Word of Glory is free. So you can throw that extra heal on yourself if you need to, or one of your allies if they're struggling or just standing in fire. You know, typical DPS things. Couple that with a massive buff to Word of Glory, and you should see some great results. If you use a Word of Glory on yourself as a prop paladin, it's now increased up to 300% instead of 150%, so double the potential value, depending on your missing health. So if you pop this on yourself when you're super, super low, it's going to be almost a free lay on hands. That's going to feel great. To round out the prop paladin changes, the armor bonus you're granted when you use Shield of the Righteous has received a large buff which works out to be about a 40% increase when compared to before, so more self-healing and more defensive capabilities. Basically the opposite of what happened to Demon Hunters. Up next we have some pretty large nerfs for Discipline Priests. Two of their major damage spells that translate into Atonement Healing have been nerfed. Smite will see a 6% reduction in damage, and Shadow Word Pain will see a 7% reduction in damage. That's not only going to mean you're simply doing less damage as a Disc Priest, but that will directly translate into less healing as well. But that's nothing compared to the massive 32% damage nerf on Shadow Word Death. To be fair, Shadow Word Death was dealing crazy amounts of damage, and a specific legendary for Discipline was allowing them to channel that into more Atonement healing. But this Shadow Word Death nerf will put something of a stop to that, and then the huge nerf to the actual legendary will stop it altogether. The legendary allowed you to convert Shadow Word Death damage into Atonement, something you can't do without the legendary, but the effect was recently changed to only grant Atonement healing when your target is below 20% health. That makes sense, Shadow Word Death is supposed to be an execute after all, but this does mean that legendary will probably see significantly less use. On top of those damage nerfs, Spirit Shell will last for 10 seconds down from 12 seconds, so you have 2 seconds less to actually pump up those shields. This might be a response to taking Spirit Shell off the global cooldown though, just to make sure it doesn't get too powerful. And another disc cooldown saw similar treatment. Rapture has had its total duration knocked down a couple seconds too, so it used to last for 10 seconds total, and now it only lasts for 8 seconds. Again, you have 2 less seconds to take advantage of your large cooldown, but Rapture was also changed recently to include a power word shield when you first cast it. That should mean Rapture won't lose too much value versus what it used to be, because you'll be able to get about the same number of shields out during its duration. I would say that all of these nerfs together do bring Disc down a few notches, but it might not change too much overall because Disc was shaping up to be an incredible healer. This doesn't neuter Disc by any means, it just brings it back into line with some of the other specs. I still think Discipline Priest might be the best all-around healer for Shadowlands though, which makes me wonder how powerful they could have been if these nerfs weren't introduced. Moving on, there aren't too many changes to talk about with shamans this time around, but the key ones here are related to Ascendance. Remember when Blizzard said they want cooldowns to feel meaningful when you push them, and if they can't do that, they'll just take them off the GCD? Well, Ascendance wasn't brought off the GCD, so they get this kind of treatment instead. For Elemental, when you first cast Ascendance, you'll instantly cast a Lava Burst to all enemies affected by your Flame Shock, and refresh your Flame Shock durations to 18 seconds. That's actually kind of cool. It has built-in cleave potential if you spread your Flame Shocks around before hitting Ascendance, and it makes sure you don't have to worry about refreshing Flame Shocks at all for the duration of your long cooldown. Enhancement will see something similar. When you use Ascendance, you immediately deal nature damage to all enemies within 8 yards. Not quite as interesting as the elemental one in my opinion, but it has the potential to provide you with some very strong AoE burst damage. It's better than nothing, at any rate. And last but not least, Prot Warriors have some changes too. Well, one change really, and it's not too much, so don't get your hopes up just yet, but the passive effect Vanguard that converts your strength into extra armor, that's going to see a reasonable buff from 25% of your strength up to 40% of your strength. So the more you gear up and the more strength you can acquire, the beefier your warrior tank is going to get just passively. That's kind of it, sadly, for now, but maybe we'll see some more prot changes in a future build. Keep your fingers crossed. So some pretty significant changes in this latest build then, with a strong focus on tank balance. We knew demon hunters and monks were doing quite well, so I guess that explains those nerfs, and prop paladins are being changed like every build, so hopefully that settles down at least somewhat before launch. 
I fully expect balance tuning to continue into the first week of raiding, but it should slow down significantly just before the expansion actually launches. Those week one balance tuning changes are always scary though, but what do you think from what you've seen so far? Are you happy that discipline is being brought back into line a little bit? And which tank would you love to see get some love before Shadowlands goes live? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want a chance at some of those beta keys, be sure to pop by our Twitter. You'll find a link in the comments and in the description straight to the giveaway. And if that's not enough for you, there's a few more up for grabs on the stream. If that's of interest, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12pm PST, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now, and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already, and to our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.